In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Lennox Elite 18 XPV, which is a high-efficiency inverter-driven variable speed heat pump, and the Amana Side Discharge ASZS6. We're going to be talking about some of the efficiency ratings. We're going to be going through the COP data as well as the different efficiency ratings for both these systems. We're going to be doing a deep dive into the tax credits as well as the tax credit eligibility, so you can see which systems qualify for what tax credit in which region and based on which size system systems because this does vary by tonnage for each of these systems. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you are new to the channel and you're in the market for HVAC system replacement, subscribing to the channel is a great way that you can show your support and it is much appreciated. So that being said, let's dive in. And for starters, we're going to look at the Elite Series. This is the Lennox product line, the ELA. 18 XPV heat pump. The reason we're comparing this system with the Amana ASZS6, when you look at these two systems, you might be thinking, hey, this isn't really an apples to apples comparison because one is a side discharge system. This is what a side discharge system looks like. And the other is a traditional condenser because these systems are going to function differently and have there's pros and cons to both of these systems in terms of how they operate. And I would agree, but the reason that we are comparing these two systems is from an efficiency standpoint, they're both kind of mid-level or entry-level inverter driven variable speed products and Lennox doesn't have a side discharge product at least I couldn't find one when I was doing my research on that so I chose kind of the closest thing to the Amana side discharge system so you could see what the difference is between these two products are that being said let's go ahead and dive into the data and we'll show you kind of what the differences are so like I mentioned both these systems are variable speed systems what that means if your current system is let's say a 20 year old system and it's just a basic single stage system the difference between that and this is that when a single stage system turns on, it turns on in the same way that you turn on a light switch and that it's either on or it's off. Well, an inverter driven or variable speed system is going to ramp up and down along a continuum similar to how a car motor works. So when the system first kicks on, it's going to ramp up its capacity. And then as long as it's calling for heating or cooling, it's going to modulate that capacity. So it might be running at 10% capacity, then 50%, then 30%, then 80%. But bottom line is it's not just running in one stage and as a result these systems are typically 30 to 50 percent more efficient than their single stage counterparts depending on which single stage system you're comparing it to because some of the newer single stage systems have a CR2 ratings as high as 15 but this system for example has a CR2 rating that goes up to 21.6 so this system is actually going to be fairly more efficient even than a brand new higher end single stage system so you will see an energy savings there and then also looking at the HSPF2 data, which stands for Heating Seasonal Performance Factor, this goes up to 8.7. Now, where this comes into play or what the difference is between some of these efficiency ratings is that when we explain it a little bit more in another video, so I'll make sure to link that at the end. But when we look at the Amana product line, as you can see, the uh, SEER2 rating on this is lower than the Elite series, where it goes up to 17.2 on the SEER2 rating. The HSPF2 goes up to 8.6. However, one of the biggest differences that you're going to notice is that this system operates in quiet mode as low as 45 decibels, which is, I believe, 13 decibels quieter than this particular system. And so when you look at how this Elite system works, the 18 series, it's very quiet, but it's still running a little bit noisier than this side discharge system. So side discharge systems are always the quietest. There's a few exceptions to this if it's a single stage system, but side discharge inverters are always going to be quiet compared to their non- inverter or even to their inverter counterparts that are in a traditional upflow condenser style like you see with this 18 series just because of how the system is designed. So if you're looking for the quietest system, going with a side discharge system might be important to you. But if you want something that's more efficient, the Elite series might be more important as well. But that being said, one thing I want to just dive into to point out in the difference is that just because the system does qualify for the heat pump tax credit, it doesn't qualify for all tonnages. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and link this in the description. As you can see right here, I have the actual Amana performance data pulled up for you so you, we can kind of compare how the system performs. I don't have that data available for Lennox, unfortunately, because I wasn't able to find that in their manual, but we can kind of read between the lines on how the system performs from a heating and cooling capacity standpoint based on the information that's available on energystar.gov, which is the website where you can find out whether or not a system qualifies for a tax credit based on 
one eligibility right here. So this is the Amana version pulled up, as you can see, for cooling capacity and systems that qualify. Basically, the two through four ton system qualifies, and the same is true from a heating capacity standpoint. And the EER ratings listed right here at 10, HSPF2 is between 8.5 and 8.6. And if you want to see how a specific system qualifies, you can actually click this tax credit eligibility, and it will take you to a new page that looks like this and basically has the difference requirements by region spelled out. So if you're in the north, there's going to be different set of regional requirements because they want a heat pump that works better in cooling mode, obviously, because you have colder winters in the north than you do in Phoenix, Arizona, for example, or Dallas, Texas. But and then if you're buying something in the southern regions, they want to make sure that it keeps up from a cooling perspective and is maximizing efficiency there. And if you scroll down a little bit further, there's a section here where you can click explore models and it'll take you through the individual models that you can search for. And I right now I have the Amana system pulled up. And as you can see, the Amana qualifies in the north, but does not in the south. And that's true for several of these systems. There's going to be differences between matchups in terms of what qualifies in the north and the south. So some of the models will have some eligibility in the southern states, but it's going to vary by the model number. Now, when we look at the Elite EL18 XPV, you can see the system only qualifies for the two-ton version. And part of the reason that that's going to happen is because of the specific matchup. And what I mean by that is just because one, this is, for example, right now we're looking at the three ton version of this Amana product line. You're going to see that the SEER 2 rating, the EER 2 rating, and the HSPF 2 rating will all vary based on the individual matchup of the outdoor unit, the coil, as well as the indoor unit. And so the same is true for this Lennox system. So one of the downsides with inverters is because of how systems are rated sometimes even though the SEER 2 rating is really high you're talking 19.4 to 21.6 unfortunately the EER 2 ratings are going to be lower especially on some of the higher tonnage systems and so even though those larger inverters like a four ton or a five ton inverter for a larger home even though it might be more efficient than single stage counterpart or some of these other systems oftentimes inverters have a hard time qualifying because of EER ratings they don't hit certain energy star requirements in order to get that energy star label it's not a really accurate representation of how an inverter is going to be efficient because inverters don't run at 100% capacity very often. They're normally at 50% or 80% or 20% of their operating capacity. And because they're modulating, that's how they get a higher efficiency for your home is because they're not always running at 100% capacity. And that's how your home stays more comfortable as well. And so as a result, you can see this Lennox Elite system doesn't qualify for those higher tonnages. If we look at some of the other systems down here, you will see there'll be even some of the Merit series. There'll be other systems that qualify at higher tonnages, like this Elite 17 XP qualifies, it looks like, up to four tons. And that's, I believe, just a two-stage system or a single-stage system. So unfortunately, that's just a trade-off with how when bureaucracies get involved in certain things, sometimes the details get mixed because Energy Star ratings weren't created by contractors. They were created by bureaucrats. I don't know if they actually consult with engineers on some of the stuff sometimes because it really doesn't make sense to me. We do like several videos where we show you what the actual amp draw is of an inverter on startup. And it's literally mind blowing how much less power it pulls. Like I can fit system when it first kicks on might pull two amps. Whereas if you look at a single stage system it might pull 10 or 15 or more depending on the tonnage. And so as a result, you're going to get any of these systems are going to be more efficient regardless of whether or not they qualify for a rebate. But this is just something we like to consider because if that's what your primary reason is for considering one of these heat pumps, you might not be getting that rebate on some of these systems, but you'll still be getting a much better system. So going into back to this, like I said, the two through four ton system qualifies. That's on for the cold climate regions. However, in the southern regions, they do not qualify. And that's just based again on some of that EER data or the EER ratings data. And so that's just something to consider. And then the Elite 18 XPV series will qualify in some of these regions, depending on some of the matchups that are available. It doesn't have that cold climate designation. So it's going to be in more of the southern regions where that qualifies. But again, it looks like it's limited to the two ton capacity system. Now, again, I like going over this. So you just have an understanding of how it actually works because they make it confusing even for contractors like us that deal with this every day and we know what to expect just because a local contractor will be able to pull this up for you, right? If you're in the market for a heat pump, your local contractor is going to be able to tell you which systems will and will not qualify based on the product lines that they carry. I wouldn't expect them to know all brands, obviously, because we don't sell Lennox. We primarily right now sell Daikin 
Daikin. And we do that just because Daikin has industry best warranty. But we like talking about these other brands because people ask and we want to be able to provide that as a resource. So now one thing I want to talk about is I mentioned it earlier is what's called COP data or heating performance. So I'm going to dive into that now and give you kind of deep dive, but also just a general overview of how heat pumps vary in functionality. But before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like button for the algorithm. And again, consider subscribing to the channel if you're enjoying this content so far. So what we're looking at here is basically heating performance data. Now we'll start with one of these systems up here so you can see the difference between how these systems perform. This is the five ton version of the Amana. This is not their enhanced version. There is an enhanced version of the Amana, which I'll talk about in a second. But what we're looking at here, I know these numbers probably look like gibberish if you're just now seeing this for the first time, but this number at the top, 65 or 47 or 45 or five, that's the outdoor ambient temperature. And then the two numbers we're going to pay attention to are in the columns for MBH and COP. COP stands for coefficient of performance. So as you can see at 47 degrees Fahrenheit, this system has a COP of 2.9. What that means or the reason that's relevant is that means for every one watt of electricity consumed, this system puts out 2.9 watts of heat energy. So it's essentially another way of stating it is if you compare this to the efficiency of a basic space heater, that's one watt in and one watt out. This is one watt in 2.9 watts out. So it's 290% more efficient than an electric space heater. Now, when we look at BTU per hour capacity or this number right here, this is saying that at 47 degrees Fahrenheit, the system has the ability to put out 54,000 BTUs of heat. It's maintaining most of its heating capacity at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. However, what you'll notice is that at these colder, low ambient temperatures at five degrees Fahrenheit, the capacity drops to 33,000 BTUs, which is about a 40% drop. However, the COP still maintains at two. Now, why is this relevant and why did I bring this up? Well, the reason this is relevant is if we go back up over to this chart, all these blue states require that your heat pump maintain two metrics. One is it needs to have 70% of its capacity that it does at 47 degrees. This first number I showed you, it needs to maintain 70% percent of that capacity at five degrees Fahrenheit. And then the COP has to maintain 1.75 at five degrees Fahrenheit as well. So even though this system maintains efficiency in terms of it maintains a COP of two, the heat pump derates by about 40%. And so it's not able to maintain capacity at those colder temperatures in order to keep your house comfortable. However, one of the differences between that and the enhanced version is when you look at the enhanced version, these systems are the systems that qualify for the heat pump tax credit. You can see that this four ton version, you know, has an output of 44,000 BTUs at 47 degrees Fahrenheit, but it only derates to 31,000 BTUs, which means that it hits that 70% mark and therefore qualifies as a cold climate heat pump for the purposes of tax credits. And it also maintains efficiency where the COP is staying at two. You're a little bit above the COP that's needed in order to hit that tax credit. And you can see the COP at 47 on the enhanced version is also at 3.3. So it's a little bit more efficient as well. So to sum this all up, which system is going to be best for you? Should you consider the side discharge system, MANA, or this Elite 18 XPV? The truth is, is that it's going to vary by region. Obviously, the 18 XPV is probably going to be better for climates that are more cooling oriented. So if you live in like the southern regions, because this doesn't meet the requirements as a cold climate heat pump. And if you're in a colder climate, then obviously the side discharge of MANA system is going to qualify as a cold climate heat pump. And so that might be a better solution for you. Also, if you're looking for the quietest system, the Amana system might be a better solution as well. However, one thing to be considered when you're looking at the side discharge heat pumps is that their performance in very hot ambient temperatures, which I'm defining as anything over 110 degrees Fahrenheit outdoor ambient temperature, these side discharge systems will start to derate and lose their capacity. And so that's something to keep in mind. But again, a local contractor in your region, they're not going to install a system that's not going to work because they don't want to have to replace it under warranty with a new system that will work. So if you've had issues or if you're concerned with potentially having a system that's not going to keep up installed, a local contractor will know whether or not these systems are designed for your specific climate. So just keep that in mind. And again, we hope you found this content helpful. Make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you happen to be in the market for HVAC system replacement, or if you just recently moved and you need a permanent HVAC company to take care of your regular maintenance and service, click the link in the description below to be connected with a local 
contractor in your area. We've actually teamed up with a handpicked group of contractors nationwide that maintain the highest customer service ratings on Google as well as technical excellence. So if you've watched this show and you thought, wow, I'd really like to work with these guys, but it's too bad that they only service a few select areas, I feel you. And that's why we've decided to partner with the best local contractors nationwide in your area, some of which have even been featured on our show. This way, you can find a contractor that's familiar with the latest technology, whether that's cold weather heat pumps or inverter driven heat pumps that work well on battery backup or solar or in-floor radiant heat or any other technology that's specific to your climate or your region. We're partnering with those contractors. So click the link in the description to request an appointment with us or with a vetted HVAC Dope Show contractor in your area. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now about heat pump efficiency ratings as well as video that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already. And we will catch you on the next episode.